in terms of us on the Isle of Wight, the funding for local government has been absolutely disastrous in recent years, and that is set to continue. And in fact, as a result of Osborne's announcements, almost certainly it's going to be even worse than it would have been, because there are some areas that are ring-fenced um, in terms of, 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 of the police. Obviously, there's going to be a massive injection into um, military expenditure in terms of what's going on in Syria at the moment. Uh, public health is uh, an area that I work in. It's a ring-fenced budget. So far, and been guaranteed ring fence for another two years. However, what they did very quietly this year was take £470,000 of a £6 million ring fence budget away. And I expect none of you heard a word of it. Uh, they're going to take another 3.7 per cent. So by the time 2017 comes, our £6 million budget will be £5 million. I want you to think about this that £10 million shortfall equates to 40 of the bombs that are shortly going to be falling from RAF bombers over the skies of Iraq, destined to kill innocent civilians, children, mothers, fathers, cousins, aunties and uncles, and whole families. And uh, when he asked me what you know, we could actually do to change things, I said, I suggest you tell your MP who voted for the cuts to cut the funding to tell the government who obviously are also cutting uh, funding to councils to change it, to give us the money that we need. Because we are very much struggling and we have a disproportionately old uh, population on the island and adult social care is, is pretty much crippling us. But if there's money for bombs, weapons and that kind of uncertain um, activity, then I say there should be money for the vulnerable, the elderly, the people with learning disabilities nationwide, but also for us here on the Isle of Wight. Yeah. I've actually brought a letter with me that Andrew Turner um, sent to me. It's quite a wordy letter. He got um, Priti Patel, who's the Employment Minister, to write um, to me because I asked him about this. You may have seen it, it was in the Daily Mail, about how the Isle of Wight has the worst level of benefits. Um, in the whole of the UK and they obviously included pensions in that and people said well it's pensions and I said well actually people and pensions have fixed income and what's our government doing about that and so there's a six page response to this which comes down to it saying universal credit on the 7th of December is coming to the Isle of Wight and universal credit apparently is the solution for all our people on the fixed income there is a simple solution to the war in Syria, and it isn't bombs, and it isn't feet on the ground, it is backing off and letting armies and organisations, mainly run by the Kurds, to actually do the good work that they are doing on the ground with the local knowledge they have. But our government doesn't listen to that because there is no arms industry involved in that. There is no money that they can get involved in that. So what I want to say is, fracking, climate change, austerity, the war in Syria, it's not in my name. And we have to stand up while, while we are doing this, like we are doing this, in groups like this, in great numbers, because that's something we can do between now and having our votes. Either I'll vote in 2017 on a local election, or I'll vote in 2020. There are things we can do, and I applaud Unite the White for organising today. Thank you very much. Back in 2002, when we didn't have hashtags, but we did have Not In My Name. Not In My Name really caught on where I was working at the time. And I started to think about all the things that should not be in my name. Not in my name, no bombs, no civilians hurt. It's not going to achieve anything. It's not going to take anybody away from their ideology those people are lost to us, probably. But unfortunately, we don't need to get into a mindset where we take a lot of other people with them. Just because there are bombs in Paris doesn't mean there aren't bombs in Syria or anywhere else. One person's life is of no greater value than anybody else's. Not in my name that we take revenge on anyone. Not in my name but if you've had a good education and you're part of the baby boomer generation, as I am, that you shouldn't understand 
what's happening to your kids and grandkids and neighbours and friends and relatives right here, right now, on the Isle of Wight, in many other places in the United Kingdom. Not in my name that anyone should have to use a food bank. Not in 2015, thank you. Not in my name that there should be a bloke today at the back of Costa raising money pound by pound for his pop-up soup kitchen, for the people that he's trying to rescue who have got potentially what I would consider to be less than nothing. I was telling someone else, he found a couple of guys in a shack made of corrugated tin at the bottom of a field behind some houses down by a stream. Sounds like the beginning of a fairy story, but it isn't. These guys have nothing because they're single and they're 35 and they're male. So they don't count in the benefit system. Now they've got sleeping bags and boots and a tent, but they're still reliant on handouts. And as far as I know, they're still there in the bottom of the field. But I had an argument online through Twitter with another senior conservative on the island who denied that such poverty and deprivation existed. And it just was beyond me. And I provided him with government statistics, with council statistics, information on the council website about those areas which are considered to be deprived on the island of Point and quite far up. Um, you know, we're not talking about mild deprivation. And they were just in complete denial. What I would like to add to the conversation as we go forward is about TTIP, because this is something I'm very concerned about. It's going to have a strong effect on the Isle of Wight and national policies. Um, it's the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership. It's not something that many people have heard about. It's something that has sort of it's been going around social media a bit, and that's how I first came up, um, upon it. And one of my residents had spent some time sort of sailing around the country trying to bring it to people's attention. <coughs> now, the thing about TTIP is it's um, a partnership, a trade partnership between America and Europe. And the idea is that they can um, remove the barriers to trade to increase profits. Now, obviously, our current government, very corporation driven, we have to admit, not necessarily for the working men. So, when I start to hear this thing, I'm, the alarm bells are ringing because I'm thinking, this, this policy and national policy at European level, our government's obviously in support of driving this forward, it's going to be about corporations taking precedent over the needs of people. And it's only people like you, organisations such as Unite the White, that can do something about this and let our voices be heard, and I applaud you for doing that. And once again, I know Andrew Turner quite well, and I'm telling you down the street, Andrew Turner wouldn't dare to stand in front of you and try to explain his government's policies. He just couldn't do it. Don't think he's going to do it because he ain't going to be allowed out of his warm office, I can tell you that. Have a social conscience, spread what you've got far and wide. Even if you haven't got much anymore, at least make sure that what you've got is spread around. Even if it's only courage. Even if it's only what I call grammar key. You know, grannies and granddads of the world unite. Not in our name either. We've had a fantastic chance. Let's have a bit of granarchy. Let's make sure that people suffering under this system, who have maybe lost their courage, lost their fortitude, they just haven't got the guts anymore because they're tired and they're knackered and they're fed up and it's too hard. And poverty and austerity are the greatest ways of keeping anybody under control. And this is going to be an absolute disaster, <coughs> not just for staff. And don't forget, we've seen over a thousand jobs go in local government, in schools, in a whole range of sectors in recent years. The reality is that this is going to be a disaster for the people who most need those services. The vulnerable, the old, the people suffering from mental health issues, people with learning disabilities, those are the people that will be most hit. We need to keep this campaign going and highlight where the blame lies. I don't think we've got the government we've asked for. We haven't got the government we deserve. That we are the... Not today, but generally speaking, we're the silent-ish majority, the decent people who want people to live decent lives. You need to start working together, and that's what I hope to continue to achieve by working with and supporting Unite the Isle of Wight. Social media is a great thing, 
but it can't beat seeing somebody's face and hearing somebody's opinions from their own mouths. We've inflicted a wound on the Tory party and we've got to keep striking that wound until we see arterial blood. Because that is the way to beat them. We use this victory in our campaigning to raise morale among working class people, people suffering austerity, give them hope. We've inflicted a wound, we have shown that the Tories can be beaten. Let it not be in my name. In the spirit of Unite the Isle of Wight, in the spirit of the Unitarian Hall, let us no longer say, not in my name. Let's say, not in our name.